In today's video, we're going to look at this interesting problem where we have a polynomial where at the first 1009 odd positive integers, the polynomial's value is the Fibonacci number indexed by that integer. And we're asked what the polynomial evaluated at 2019 is. And it turns out that that's a difference of two Fibonacci numbers itself. And we're going to see why using Lagrange interpolation, which allows us to take values out of polynomial that we know and extract what the actual polynomial is in a really quick way. So stay tuned for this interesting polynomial problem. Hey, welcome to today's video on Prof. Omar. So today we're interested in this problem that tells us that we have a polynomial where p of 1 is the first Fibonacci number, p of 3 is the third, etc. up to p of 2019 is the 2019th. We want to figure out that p of 2019 is actually a difference of Fibonacci polynomials and which are Fibonacci numbers and which Fibonacci numbers they are. So we're going to use the Lagrange interpolation to do this, which takes values that we know of a polynomial and extracts what the actual polynomial is if we know the degree. In this case, we have a polynomial of degree 1008 and we have 1009 values of it, right? So that's going to be able to help us figure out what the polynomial is. Now to illustrate how this process of Lagrange interpolation works, I want to start with a simpler example so you get a sense of how it works, why it works, and then use it for the polynomial that we have at hand. So let's say we wanted to find a polynomial of degree 2, so a quadratic, where p of 0 is 1, p of 1 is 1, and p of 2 is negative 1. Now we could just assume the quadratic is generic and solve for the coefficients, but there's actually a really nice way, Lagrange interpolation, to get a polynomial like that. And so the process is the following. You write down p of 0 and multiply it by the expression x minus 1 times x minus 2, all divided by 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 2. So this is the variable x subtracted by the different other values we're inputting to the polynomial, 1 and 2, and then divided by the argument we were dealing with, 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 2. And then we're going to symmetrize that. So we're going to add by p of 1 times the quantity x minus 0 times x minus 2 divided by 1 minus 0 times 1 minus 2. And then add in p of 2 times x minus the other two values, so x minus 0 times x minus 1, all over 2 minus 0 times 2 minus 1. So this is a polynomial itself. It's a quadratic polynomial. Let's look at its values at different values of x. So let's plug in x equals 0. So in the first piece, we're going to have at 0, we'll have p of 0 times, in the numerator, 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 2, all over 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 2. So by construction, we're left with p of 0 when evaluated at, when we evaluate that sum end at 0. Now this next sum end will have p of 1 times 0 minus 0, and since that's 0, all the rest of the matter doesn't matter whatsoever, and so we're left with 0 for that second sum end when we plug in x equals 0. In the third sum end, we have the same phenomenon where we plug in, we get 0 minus 0, the rest of the stuff doesn't matter, we're left with 0. So all in all, when we plug in x equals 0, we get p of 0. Okay, great. Now, by the symmetrized fashion of the way we constructed this polynomial, at x equals 1, we'll also get p of 1, and at x equals 2, we'll get p of 2. And so, this polynomial that we have will actually agree with the values that we have. At 0, it's 1, at 1, it's 1, and at 2, it's negative 1. Um, so, if we actually expand these values, we'll get for the first term, uh, p of 0 is 1, so we'll get a half, because of the 2 in the denominator, of x minus 1 times x minus 2, plus negative 1 times x times x minus 2, minus a half times x times x minus 1. Expanding all that out, you'll end up with negative x squared plus x plus 1 as your final polynomial. That actually works. If you plug in 0, you get 1. If you plug in 1, you get minus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 1. And you plug in 2, you get minus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. Cool, so this process gives us a polynomial that agrees with the values that um, we wanted. So let's use this in our example where we have 1009 values for a polynomial and want to find a polynomial of degree 1008 that fits all of them. 
So in general, for general input and outputs, the polynomial is going to look like the following. And we're going to evaluate p at 2019. So that's going to be the sum i equals 0 to n here is 1008, because we have a 1008 degree polynomial, times f sub 2i plus 1, that's the value of the ith input, um, times the product j not equal to i of the 2019, the x value we're evaluating, minus the jth input, which is 2j plus 1, all over the ith input minus the jth input, which is 2i plus 1 minus 2j plus 1. Okay, now we see there's a common factor of 2 in each of the fractions in the numerator and denominator, so we get a sum i equals 0 to 1008 of f sub 2i plus 1 times this product again of j not equal to i of the 2019 and the minus 1 give us a 1009 when we divide by 2 minus j all over i minus j. Doesn't seem like a really like helpful expression, but if we pick things apart, we'll be able to figure out what this entire thing is. And the first place we want to start is by looking at this product. Let's actually rewrite this product in a nice compact form. We'll fix an i as one of the sum ends in the sum we have and look at the numerator and denominator of this product expression. So the numerator looks like the following. It's 1009 minus 0 times 1009 minus 1, etc., up to 1009 minus the quantity i minus 1. Then we skip i, because j is not equal to i, and we get 1009 minus the quantity i plus 1, all the way to 1009 minus 1008. Okay, so we essentially here have 1009 factorial, except we're missing the term 1009 minus i. So we'll divide by 1009 minus i, and that is our numerator. Okay, how about the denominator? Let's write that out and then um, put that all together. So the denominator, we have i minus 1, or i minus 0, times i minus 1, uh, all the way to i minus the quantity i minus 1, we skip i minus i, and then we have i minus i plus 1, i minus i plus 2, all the way to i minus the last thing, which is 1008. Okay, so the product of the first few things is i factorial. Now, all the other things are negative, so if we swap the negative signs, we'll end up with 1008 minus i factorial, and then the number of copies of negative 1 is the number of terms, which is 1,008 minus i. All right, so altogether then, we get 1,009 factorial divided by 1,009 minus i, and then that multiplied by 1 over whatever we had for the denominator, which was this i factorial, times 1,000. 8 minus i factorial uh, multiplied by this power of negative 1. And we see here then we pretty much have a binomial coefficient. That's 1009 choose i. But we have to scale by this negative 1 um, to the 1008 minus i factor. Okay, great. So a nice way to write this product is a binomial coefficient. So it's giving us a hint as to what kind of thing we should expect to do in the next part. So let's replace that product then by this binomial coefficient with the negative 1 power um, and put things together. So to continue, one of the things we're going to use is a known fact about Fibonacci numbers. The nth Fibonacci number can actually be written as 1 over root 5 times the quantity alpha to the n minus beta to the n, where alpha, which is greater than beta, are the roots of the polynomial x squared minus x minus 1. Okay, so if we do that, then we can replace this instance of f sub 2i plus 1 with alpha to the 2i minus, uh, plus 1 minus alpha to the 2i plus 1 itself. Um, and then break that up. And we're going to see with the binomial coefficient how we're going to be able to use the binomial theorem to rewrite this entire large expression. It's going to turn out to have a fascinating result. Um, so let's go ahead and do that substituting. So we get 1 over root 5 times the sum i equals 0 to 1008 
of uh, alpha to the 2i plus 1 times this negative 1 to the 1008 minus i. Now we're going to actually write this as 1009 minus i to match with the binomial coefficient and take a negative out so that we can, we can see explicitly where the binomial theorem is going to come in. Okay, and to even sort of make things a little bit more concrete, let's set everything up so that we see a binomial theorem-like expansion for us. So we have 1009 choose i, um, but we'd like like something raised to the i to match the negative 1 raised to the 1009 minus i. So we'll pull out the negative alpha and we'll have alpha squared to the i. Okay, and so we see the alpha squared raised to the i matches with the negative 1 raised to the 1009 minus i and the binomial 1009 choose i to give us a binomial theorem-like expansion that we can collapse into an expression that's much more simpler than what we have here in the entire sum. We do have to be careful though, the sum's going from i equals zero to 1008, so there's gonna be an extra term missing. Okay, so uh, let's rewrite the rest of this. We're missing the beta contribution, which is gonna look the same. We'll have minus one over root five times the sum, i equals zero to 1008, negative beta, beta squared to the i, negative one to the 1009 minus i, 1009 choose i. Okay, so let's go ahead then and use the binomial theorem thing we were mentioning. Again, we almost have a binomial theorem expression for each of these summands, but we're going from i equals zero to 1008, so we're gonna be missing that top term. If we simplify, we'll get one over root five, and we'll get minus alpha that we can pull out from the sum, and then we're gonna get alpha squared minus one, all raised to the 1009 by the binomial theorem, but we're missing that top 1009 term, which is alpha squared raised to the 1009. Okay, great, and then we have a similar expression for beta, but instead of a negative, we'll have a positive because we have two negative signs um, that we see in our expression. So we'll get plus beta times beta squared minus one, all raised to the 1009, minus beta squared raised to the 1009. Okay, so now here's where some magic really happens. Alpha squared minus one, because alpha is a root of this polynomial right here, alpha squared minus one actually equals alpha. And same with beta squared minus one, it is beta. So this expression can be written in a more simpler form. If we expand the alpha and the beta in the parentheses there, we'll get a minus alpha to the 1010, because we have an alpha to the 1009 there, plus alpha to the 2019. And similarly with the beta, we'll get a plus beta to the 1010, uh, and then a minus beta to the 2019. So these underlying pieces together with the formula for the nth Fibonacci numbers, the straight underlined ones give us f sub 2010, the negative uh, uh, 1010, the negative of it, and the curly ones give us f sub 2019. So there we have it, p of 2019 written as the difference of two Fibonacci numbers as a consequence of a combination of Lagrange interpolation and this nice binomial theorem together with the explicit formula for the Fibonacci numbers.